This is the statue and doors that hundreds of George Mason High School students and faculty will walk past to honor the 17 that were killed during the Parkland School shooting on February 14, 2018. As students attend class, some are preparing for the walkout by making signs and rehearsing their speeches. All right, so it's before the protest. What are you guys thinking of doing once you get out there? Once we get out there, we're going to organize ourselves from youngest to oldest and start talking about um, how we're going to do it. How are you going to do it? How do you feel right now? Are you anxious? Yeah, I'm really nervous. I'm really nervous? Because this is a big issue. I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up. Uh, well, I believe in you. Um, how... So how well do you think it's going to go? I think it's going to go really well. I really hope that all the students respect when we're talking because, like I said, this is a tragic thing and like, we really need to we're like fighting. We're students fighting for rights yeah. that need to happen. What do, you, what do you hope happens as a result of this protest? Um, gun control. And I want, I want our voice to be heard. Security was a major concern for students and was a main reason for many not walking out. Uh, no, uh, I will not. Uh, I won't be, um, for two reasons. One, because, uh, it's not safe. Um, I think, you know, broadcasting to the world where we're, where tons of students are going to be in such a compact place is not safe at all. Um, just like the bomb threat, similar to that, you know, they've said they're going to be moving all the kids to the MEH gym and that wasn't really safe either. I don't think it's safe. Okay, so from the moment that they made a Facebook page, they basically broadcasted to the world that on this time, on this day, probably over 100 students are going to be in this one specific place all in one group. I think that's about as safe as when we had the bomb threat and they loaded us all into the gym. Even, you know, even on the radio station this morning, um, they were talking about it. So, you know, maybe it's a little paranoid, but I don't think it's safe to put all the students in one exact place when the entire world knows about it. I don't think I was going to do the walkout from the moment I found out it was a thing. It's not even political for me. Some students, though, did think the walkout was political. Yes, I think it is political, and I think it should be, because I think that the students of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School have made it very clear in their efforts to make a Never Again movement that is focused on congressional lawmaking and other policy changes, and I think that if students would like to make it political, it very much should be to honor the survivors of the school shooting. I feel as if it's come too, too political. I feel like it should be someone just to go pay your respects and stay silent, but I saw people are bringing a bunch of signs and it feels like a protest almost instead of a, just a walk for respect and for mourning. Um, and then the second reason is uh, I don't like the political background of this. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to depoliticize this. Um, this was started by the National Women's March uh, organization. They're the ones who came up with the plan to do this, and I'm just not really for this uh, liberal leaning of this protest, and uh, that's why I won't be participating in this walkout. No matter what your stance was, at 10 a.m. on March 14th, 2018, it was time for George Mason High School's walkout. After all the students arrived on the football field, there were 17 minutes of silence to honor the ones who were killed. After the silence, members of the Students Demand Action Club started to read memoirs about the 17 students who were killed. After the last account was told, students were asked to head back into the school and continue their classes. As we headed back in, we were lucky and spotted our principal, Mr. Hills, and we were able to get a quick interview.
Um, I think it was an absolute success. I just had a couple students share with me they felt like it was definitely student-led. Uh, they felt as though the administration supported them, um, but didn't do it in a manner where they tried to run the day or run the event. And so uh, I was very happy about the feedback that I received from several students, including uh, Ms. Matten, who's the leader of the Students Demand Action Club. Um, what do you think uh, this uh, walkout's going to accomplish in the greater scheme of things? <sighs> Goodness, I that that is so hard to answer. You know, I, I think so many so many things need to be addressed. Uh, whether it's gun reform, whether it's school safety, you know, I think that if nothing else, we're setting a precedent where student voices are being heard, and that's a critical component for any change in our society. Uh, so I think if nothing else, it's setting the stage moving forward for allowing our um, legislatures and uh, senators and uh, ultimately our president to hear our student voices and say, you know what, there are some things that we need to consider moving forward to ensure the safety of all of our students. Um, we interviewed a couple students that were um, deciding to stay inside and not walk out today for political reasons. Could you speak to that a little bit? I, I can't. You know, I'm not, I know that as I did my walk through the school, uh, there were several classrooms where students remained. Um, and I did not speak to any of them in terms of why they remained. I didn't know if it was because of the weather or because of their political position. But as I mentioned to the entire student body, uh, we respect whatever your feeling is on the topic. And I think that's important. Let's see if students felt the same way about the school's political stance on the walkout. No, I think uh, uh, they've been great with it. I mean, uh, students, um, as a student liaison, right when I heard about the walkout, um, I, some students came up to me and said, I don't want to participate in this. And um, they said, okay, you don't have to participate. You know, you can, you're allowed to exercise your free speech. If people are staying inside for political reasons, that's perfectly fine. And I have no opposition to people who disagree with the politics because it's meant to be controversial. It's not meant to be something everyone agrees with. It's meant to promote change and to promote discourse. So as long as people are part of the political issues and speaking out for whatever they believe in, they're helping no matter what their opinion may be. Uh, I mean, nowadays I think it's pretty hard not to be unpolitical and pretty biased, but uh, this is kind of a hard place, um, Falls Church, to not share your opinions. So. Uh, do you think the walkout today was politically biased towards one side or the other? I don't believe so. I think that the 17 minutes where we had an opportunity to talk about each victim, I think it was more about that. Um, I think that there might be a perception when you think about gun reform and certain gun laws that we want to see happen. I think that was an element, but I don't, I don't think that that was on the forefront for today. I think that might be something uh, where the D.C. event that's happening in two weeks, it might be more politically based than it was today. Okay. And uh, last question. Can you speak a little bit to the security accommodations that were made today to uh, support the walkout? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as you saw, we had several folks from central office come over and really they were here to support the students. Um, we had adults that were stationed in several of the exits uh, to remind students that we wanted everyone to funnel through door 15, which was towards the Mustang Cafe. And that was for safety reasons. We didn't want uh, students exiting through all 37 exits in, the, in this particular building because it does compromise the safety of our students. Um, so we had all of our administrators on standby. We had some folks down at the field that where we set up um, everything that was needed for the event. Uh, Coach Braven ended up helping us with that. So I think together we really just worked as a team, and it wasn't to – it was to make sure that each student in this building felt supported. So I, I felt pretty good about that. Overall, based on the people we talked to and by the number of students who attended the event, many would call the George Mason High School walkout a success. Students who did not attend also felt that they were treated with respect because the school did not force anyone to participate. On social media, people commended George Mason High School for allowing the students to walk out because other schools in the country forced their students to stay inside and prohibited walkouts overall. At George Mason High School, students were able to pay their regards and honor the ones who were tragically killed.